Okay, just about to leave the Airbnb for the last time. The trip is coming to an end, unfortunately, so we're going to fly home. But I'm going to try and film a video and edit it on my phone on the way back. So let's see how this goes. I'm using the Google Pixel 4a, and yeah, let's see how it goes. <laughs> I had to go check in the bag, the surfboard bag for the oversight check-in and it was massive. Um, and now hopefully we'll go through security and get some food. Okay, so we just made it through customs now. Just getting a coffee and eating some food and then just playing the waiting game really until, until the plane comes. So I've started using the editor online but it's a bit it's a bit weird on your phone like trying to do it with your finger instead of like a mouse. I just think I'll need to get used to it. but. I don't know, it could be a thing in the future, editing on your phone. I decided to do this vlog on my phone because I've been using it while I've been away just to fill in the blanks when I haven't had my camera. And the, it, it's, it's great, it's a great tool to have on you, but the only thing is, is this right here is not really wide, the front camera. It's very like, it feels like I crop out my chin or the top of my head, so... That's the only thing I'd say about it is like if the front camera was a bit wider it would it would be great to be able to just pick up your phone and start vlogging and easy as that even though you can still do it but it just I think it needs to just have a wider perspective personally. Um, the great thing about the Pixel is that it has this cinematic pan so it sort of adds like a stabilization to it. You do lose quality when it does it but it has a stabilization in the pan which is great for just like handheld little fill in b-roll shot. Now that we're not a part of the EU, every single time you go through, you get a little stamp in, uh, stamp in your passport. So, really racking them up now. Just make out my surfboard down there. Wait to be loaded on. Just waiting to board the flight now. Just gonna wait for the queue to go down. I'll be on there, heading home. How, how's your trip, Joe? to get on the plate now and should be back in the UK in about two hours time. Okay, we made it back to the UK all safe and sound, got the surfboard, so let's go home and I'll keep you updated when I get back on how the editing on the phone goes. Alright, I just got back from Portugal um, a couple of days ago and yes, I've had a shave. And I'm going to speak about my attempt to film a vlog on my on my phone and then edit it on my phone and how the experience went and whether I'd recommend you doing it yourself. 
So I did it on this phone here, the Pixel 4a, and the camera's fantastic on it, you know. If you, you can download second party apps and get 60 frames, but I didn't even need to do that, I just used the the normal camera on the phone and it was fantastic. It was 30 frames per second. What I would say about filming on this phone though is it can, it does have a bit of wobble to it, so you can do a smooth pan mode and then that'll add like a bit of stabilization to it, to your footage and it will really help. The trip went really smooth and everything went all right. I got plenty of footage for to make a little video for it. However, when I got on the plane, I wanted to just try and start editing. I downloaded an app, I think it was called Ucut or something, something like that. It was orange and there was a film, film strip there with a cut on it. So I was like, oh, that looks good. Let's give that a go. And I came to quickly realize when I was on the plane that it only could take a certain amount of footage on there. So I had to, basically I couldn't edit it on the, on the plane because I didn't have enough room for the footage I'd captured on the edited software. So when I came back, I had a look up and I had a look what the best ones would be. So I downloaded an app called Splice. And this is a fantastic app if you are editing short little videos, it is great, it is really nifty, intuitive, and I really enjoyed my experience using it. However, when you use an app like this, it doesn't have any, well, for first of all, with the music, you can't see the waveforms on there, and this really annoys me, because when you're trying to cut to music, you can't, cut it bang on the beat, you know, it's always a little out of time, no matter how hard you try, you never can really get it truly there. So this was a, this was a downside to it. Also, it was it didn't have like a cut tool to it, so you had to like drag it, drag each one of them, and it got really nifty and it took a while to get it to the exact mark to it. Also, another thing about this is you can't really color grade the footage in it. I know it's on the phone, so it'd have a standard profile to it, but I'd always like to you know, add a little contrast and boost the saturation up just to add a little more life and flavor and character to the image. In the end, I didn't really give up, but I just sort of thought, why, why waste my time on this, learning this, when I can do it twice as fast on my laptop? And that's, it was all about finding ease and convenience for me. It was like, if this is easier than doing it on my laptop, this is the way I'm going to move forward with my workflow on YouTube. However, it didn't quite work out like that, so I decided to go back to my laptop. And plus, the footage I'm filming right here now on the Lumix S5, I couldn't exactly add into my phone, which is in like 4K log, you know, footage. So it, you, you wouldn't be, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be able to handle it, I don't think. So that is another reason why it's just the quality control on videos is that yes it's good like you know you can just whip this out anywhere and it is good for filler shots but I wouldn't use it as my main vlog setup I'd still either use this or the Canon and that would be my preferable workflow to do it going into the future and going on my next trip. The other thing about Splice was that its music library wasn't that great. It had some songs, but you couldn't add the songs that I use from Epidemic Sound or anywhere like that. You only had their ones in the system and they were great and they didn't really have the beats that I wanted or the, the pacing to the edit I needed for it. So would I recommend using Splice? Yeah, I would because you can use different aspect ratios and create a wide different range of videos. If you're editing straight from your phone, I do it in an Instagram reel, you can do it on there, no problem. But if you're editing a longer form content like YouTube, I don't think it would be the best way to go about it. I feel like you should just do it the traditional way on a laptop because you, or a computer because you've got all the controls there, you've got the shortcuts, you've got a mouse. And it, when, you, when you edit, you need a rhythm, it has a rhythm to it. And I don't find editing on a phone has a rhythm to it. It's very slow, it's very lethargic. Whereas when I'm editing, when I'm editing on my laptop, I feel like a DJ, you know, I'm feeling, I'm beats going, I'm standing up, you know, I'm, I'm, 
I'm in the zone and I'm enjoying it, I'm getting into it, but whereas on the phone it felt like it was a bit forced. I'd also recommend using the phone to fill in shots for B-roll. Like when I was in Porto and I went to the football match, I didn't use, I didn't take my camera with me, I just used my phone the whole time and I zoomed in and it was fine and it didn't have any issues with the footage then. But it's great for filler shots like that, adventure going to that you don't want to take a big camera too. But if you're walking down the street, you know, if you go and start seeing and you're doing that sort of thing, I'd recommend having a camera as well because the quality will never be as good, I feel. You'll never be able to get that depth of field, never be able to get that lovely bokeh, even if you can digitally enhance it now on the iPhone. I feel that the, the best photos and the best videos you're going to take is on a mirrorless or a DSLR camera for that matter. So yeah, that's what I recommend. I recommend using your phone as filler, not killer. And you know, take your take your camera with you everywhere you go. This this won't take over. As much as everyone says it will, I don't I don't think your phone will take over from your main camera setup. It's good for like a sidearm to your main weapon, but it, it, it will never take over for me because the quality isn't there. It's great to be home and I thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be bringing you some more in the coming year and I'm very excited for 2022 and see see what happens, see where we go and you know what, what the year is going to bring. Who knows? But I'm very excited for it. I'm very excited to have the opportunity to go away. I'm very excited about just making YouTube videos. It's been a great year for them I feel. I've, I feel like I've been more consistent this year than I have been the previous year. So, yeah, I'm going to go out there and try and do as many as I can and hopefully bring them to you throughout the new year. I uh, Once again, thank you for watching and uh, sticking with me. And uh, if you like this video, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you.